If you have your Bible, go ahead and get it out. Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. We're going to begin in verse 1. Luke chapter 24, beginning with verse 1. And when you get there, say, He is alive. He is alive. All right. He's alive. He's alive. Luke chapter 24, beginning with verse 1. We're going to read the first 12 verses there. Luke chapter 24, beginning with verse 1. The Bible says here, now on the first day of the week, um, can somebody hook me up with a water, please? Uh, The the, the fluid was flying earlier and I need to replace it. Thank you. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they... Thank you, Pastor Dan. You are... Amazing. Uh, now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had uh, prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Come on. Amen. Then they went in. Man, this is going to be fun. I, I, I got some shout backs in this service. <laughs> then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. Come on, somebody. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed. That's where I got that word earlier when I used perplexed. About this. that be <laughs> Come on, freshen up on the glossary of the word of God this morning. Uh, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then, as they were afraid and bound their faces to the earth, they said to them, I love, Why do you seek the living among the dead? Come on, somebody. <laughs> he's not here, but he's risen. Yes. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. <laughs> And they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the leaven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women. Where are the men at? That's what where is the men at in the church? Come on, somebody. And all the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. There they are. All right. And their words seemed to them like idle tales, and they did not believe them. Come on, somebody say, men, trust your, the, the, your, your, your wives' words. Come on. Trust the women. Trust the women. <laughs> they got some wisdom there. <laughs> but, Peter, <laughs> but Peter rose and ran to the tomb, and stopping down, he saw the linen clothes, or stooping down, excuse me, he saw the linen clothes lying by themselves, and he departed, marveling to himself at what he had appeared. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for your word this morning. I thank you, Lord, that your word is absolute truth. It is the truth. Jesus, you are the word that became flesh and dwelt among men. You are the way, the truth, and the only life, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that your word, heaven and earth will pass away. Your word will stand forever. We thank you this morning as your word goes forth, Lord. May we choose to, uh, to believe it, to put our faith in it, to apply it to our life, and begin to build our lives upon your word because it is a firm foundation, Lord, that cannot be shaken, that cannot be broken, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your word. We embrace your word. We cherish your word, Lord God, and we trust your word. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving us ears to hear and eyes to see what you would have us hear and see this morning. We love you. Holy Spirit, have your way. I pray that you would preach through me, Lord God, and may your anointing destroy yokes, any yokes in this place. We worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said amen. 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 On this wonderful Easter morning of 2019, I want to share with you guys a message entitled, From Death to Life. From death to life. Somebody say, from death to life. life. This life we live in here on earth, all of us at some point in our life, we have experienced the pain of death. We've experienced the effects of death. We've had maybe a grandparent 
uh, 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 die and go on to be with Jesus. Maybe we've had a, 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 a spouse or a child or a best friend. All of us have experienced the pain and the grief that comes when someone that we love to and we're close with dies. But I have good news for you today. Good news for you today. That Easter, even though the, the bunny rabbit is, is cool, and even though the Easter eggs are very, very colorful, and it's exciting to go and, and, and go and hunt after them. Oh, I got to tell y'all something. I got to tell y'all something. Two things about the Easter eggs. First thing is, yesterday at our egg extravaganza, how many had a good time at egg extravaganza yesterday? Thank, all, again, all of you guys who came out and served, y'all are amazing, boy. Y'all are the dream team. Y'all knocked out of the park. But I was out there um, uh, just greeting folks. Two little boys got out of their, their mom's van, and as they, they, uh, soon as they got to the, the path there, they uh, looked out and saw the Easter Bunny sitting at the photo booth. And they just went nuts, man. I mean, they were like, Mom, it's the Easter Bunny! Oh, it's the Easter Bunny! I mean, they're just, they're, they were bouncing off one another, man, and then they, they ran straight to the Easter Bunny, boy. I, that blessed me. That blessed me. I was like, I'm so glad we invested as a church into that Easter Bunny costume. That was worth it right there for those two little boys. <laughs> that changed their life. <laughs> but uh, they were so stoked. That blessed me yesterday. And then I got to tell you all something. So it's a family tradition. How many of you all grew up in a home? I grew up in a home with my, my awesome family, but we just didn't do, we just didn't do family traditions. We kind of, we shot from the hip, you know, every year at, at stuff. And, 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 and if everybody could get there and, and, and decent and in order, well, it was a success. Come on, somebody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Elizabeth's family, on the other hand, they, they are... Uh, they take traditions very seriously, and they just go all out for Christmas and Easter. And so uh, one of the traditions is uh, her, her, her dad still hides Easter eggs, even though, you know, we're, we're adults now. <laughs> Come on, somebody. We got, we got a child on the way. We, he hides the Easter eggs. And so yesterday, all of them was at our house, and he hid the Easter eggs. And so it was time for us to go out. And next thing we know, we looked around. And everybody's like, where's Granny? Where's Granny at? Nobody could find Granny. Where's Granny? And uh, we walked outside, walking around the house. And, man, she was already in the front yard, had a basket full. Come on, somebody. <laughs> like, Granny, that's not fair. You're cheating. But how you going to get on to Granny? Come on. Granny can do what she wants to. Come on, somebody, and it's okay. <laughs> but I kind of got a little aggravated when I found out what was in the Easter eggs. We, we got on inside. We brought the Easter eggs in. When we opened them things up, it had numbers in them. I'm like, what? what they got number? Where the candy at? Where the cash at? Come on, somebody. I was like, I can't believe I still get this excited at 33 of Easter eggs. Come on, somebody. And, uh, and there, there was uh, numbers. And so Elizabeth's mom started, uh, uh, she pulled out all these $25 gift cards and all, uh, fishing rods. And I'm like, what the world? She said, yeah, all these have numbers on them. And uh, I'm like, I got three numbers. <laughs> Grandma got my numbers. <laughs> and so, uh, so anyway, I, I had to repent. I had, I had to like put my head down. It's like, Lord Jesus, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. I thank you, Lord. I'm spo- I, I prefer granny. I prefer granny. <laughs> but, man, we had a good time. We, well, they, they, they left with I don't know how many gift cards. Thank God. Uh, I, said, I, said, I said, Granddad, you, you and granny, y'all going on all kinds of dates. He said, no, nah, I'm, 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 I'm going by myself to the Olive Garden. She can, she can go to, uh, you know, this one by herself. I'm like, all right. <laughs> hey, if it's been working for 50-something years, I guess, you know, you keep going at it, baby. You're doing something right. <laughs> but I had to share that with you guys. That's not in the notes. Uh, but I felt like you needed it. You needed it. The joy of the Lord's our strength. But we all have experienced the pains of death. But the good news is... Because Easter is about our Savior getting up out of the grave. Jesus conquered death and hell and the grave for us. And because He conquered it for us, you and I have been made more than conquerors. We can have victory over death ourselves. You know that it's appointed once for every man to die, the Bible says. But we'll truly never die. This, this body, this temporary fleshly body, 
will, uh, will stop going one day and it will return to the earth which it came from. But our spirit man will be translated from this realm into the spirit realm and we'll be in, the, uh, in glory with Jesus. We're never ever going to die. That is good news. That's real good news. So we don't have to fear death. We no longer have to fear death, but uh, uh, resurrection is about us being passed from death to life with our Savior, Jesus. And today, I want to point out three things that will help you live a life where you're cons consistently uh, 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 living a life full of abundance and so that you'll never, ever have to experience uh, uh, the wages of sin and death ever, ever again spiritually. Uh, in this passage of Scripture, uh, there's three things I want to point out today. Somebody say seek. seek. Somebody say surrender. surrender. Somebody say share. share. Somebody say seek. seek. Somebody say surrender. surrender. Somebody say share. share. So here it is, these three ladies. There were women they, who were the first eyewitnesses of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the three main ladies that all the Gospels point out were three Marys. Now, you would think that, man, come on, folks, you can get a little more creative. Uh, everybody's named Mary? Well, where's Susie? Where's uh, Samantha? Come on. But uh, there were three Marys here in this passage of Scripture. You have Mary Magdalene. Now, this lady, at one time, she had seven, she was bound by seven demons. She was a demoniac. But she came in contact with Jesus, who is our deliverer. And when she come in contact with Jesus, those demons bowed down, left her body, left her life. And from that day forward, she became a follower of Jesus Christ. She became one of his disciples. And not only that, how many of you know that gratitude produces generosity? She was so grateful that she became a financial partner to Jesus' ministry. She followed them everywhere and sowed into their ministry financially. That's awesome. So if God can take someone who has seven demons and a woman of that day and turn her into, bless her financially, cause her to prosper financially, and cause her to be a financer of his kingdom work, then I'm telling you, it doesn't matter where you... You've been in life where you've come from, what you've done. If God can do that with Mary Magdalene, God can make something great out of you. Come on, somebody. So you have Mary Magdalene. You have Mary, um, who is the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee. And then you have Mary, the mother of Jesus. So these three ladies and other women, they got up real, real early to seek Jesus. They went to seek Jesus. They, they, they loved him so much. These ladies were there at, at, the, at his flogging. They were there at his crucifixion. They never left him. They, and then they were the first ones to witness his resurrection because they were so grateful for his salvation, for his deliverance in their life, for his provision in their life. And because of that, they, they got up before the sun and said, we got to go see Jesus. And they, they sought after him to anoint his body with fragrant oil. One of the things that we can learn here is everybody, and they may not realize it yet, but everybody is in search of Jesus. Everybody is in search of God. They may not even want to uh, 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 acknowledge it, but every heart, every person, all of us, we were born in sin. We were born with a void in our heart, and we, we were born from a kid with a void there, and our heart searches after our Creator. And the thing about these ladies, though, that's interesting is that they were see seeking after a dead Jesus. They were seeking after a dead Jesus. That's why initially when they got there, they didn't find him because they were looking for the living among the dead. And many of us, it took us if we had found Jesus and made him Lord of our life. I know for me, it took me a few years before I, I found that the God I was searching for was Jesus Christ. Because I was looking for love in all the wrong places. Come on, somebody. 
I was looking for love in relationships. I was looking for love in alcohol. I was looking for love in pornography. And every time that I gave myself to those things, I came up short. I ca- it came up with a lot of guilt, with a lot of condemnation, with a lot of regret. But truly, deep down inside of my heart, I wasn't searching for those things. I was searching for the living, but I was searching for the living among dead things. Woo, Jesus. Because you can't find the living amongst the dead. If you're going to find Jesus, you're going to find him on your knees. You're going to find him in a church house that's proclaiming his name and declaring his praise and worshiping him. If you're going to find Jesus, if you're going to find hope, if you're going to find joy, if you're going to discover unconditional love, it's going to be in the house of God where the living are. And how many of you know that this room right here is filled with people who are alive in Jesus and he is alive in us. Hallelujah. (laughs) Woo! We once were dead in our trespasses and sin according to Ephesians 2. But, he, but now we've been made alive in Christ. We've been raised with Him. Now we're seated with Him in heavenly places. Hallelujah. We have a lot to be thankful for. We're no longer dead men or women walking around, stumbling in the dark. Somebody say, seek. So here these ladies are. They're looking for Jesus. And then they have an angel and said, Why are you looking among, for the living among the dead? He's not here he is risen. And then they said something to uh, them that is, is very, very profound here. They said, remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, the Son of Man must be delivered to sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. They had forgot the word of God. They had forgot God's promises. So they, they, waste, they, have, they had great intentions. They had good hearts. They wanted to go show the respects to God, but they wasted finances. They wasted time. They, they wasted their energy because they forgot the one, one part of his promises, which was, I will be crucified, but don't look for me among the dead. Don't look for me in the tomb. This is a borrowed tomb. I'm only going to be here momentarily, baby. Don't look for me here. I'm going to rise on the third day from the dead. Hallelujah. If they would have just remembered and if they would have just surrendered to the word of God, it would have saved them a lot of trouble that morning. They could have enjoyed more time at the table with him than than the time they spent wasted at the tomb without him. Thank you, Jesus. I said they could have spent more time at the table with him than they wasted at the tomb without him. Hallelujah. Many of us, we... We've wasted time, we've wasted finances, we've wasted resources because we failed to do the same thing. We love God with all of our heart, but a lot of times we fail to surrender to the Word of God in our life. We fail to acknowledge God's Word, God's way, what God thinks about things. And then once we find His Word, once we get direction, sometimes we fail to yield and surrender to the leading of the Spirit of God. And when we do that, a lot of times we end up uh, uh, with, with, with heartbreak and heartaches come on somebody we end up suffering when we don't have to but man if we'll live a life that is spirit led and that is word dominated if we live a life that is yielded to the word of God and the spirit of God every single day of our life we can save a lot of time we can save ourselves from a lot of pain and agony and we can live a life that's full of abundance full of joy and full of peace somebody say surrender The good news about that, though, Susie, is when we do miss it, when we do make mistakes, when we do go our own way, all we have to do is just remember. Just repent. These ladies, after they got that reminder, the Bible says they remembered the word of the Lord. That was their repentance. That was their getting back in line. All we have to do is remember. Okay, God, I remember what you, what you want me to do about this. Sorry I missed you there, but uh, I straightened it out now. Thank you. For, for uh, helping me here. And when we do that, God, he'll redeem the time. He'll restore the finances. He'll heal the broken hearts. He'll restore the broken relationships. He'll do great things. He'll, he'll cause all things to work together for our good. Are you thankful for that this morning? Yeah. 
Somebody say surrender. Surrender. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We worship you. And then the last thing this morning is uh, share. Share. After they encountered the angels and they, they remember, okay, he's not here. He's alive. They got so excited. God's word's true. God's faithful. Like, he did it. How many of you have done that? I have. Believing for breakthrough. And it's like, we feel like, uh, you know, he's three days late. You know, but he always arrives on time. And then when he finally comes, we're like, oh, so, uh, I'm sorry for doubting you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. You're so faithful. You're faithful when I'm faithless, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sort of like, sort of like uh, uh, Mary and Martha, the, uh, the sisters of, of Lazarus, when they died. You know, he, they died and well, he was sick. And then they sent for Jesus and he didn't get in a hurry. When you are the resurrection and life, you don't get in a hurry. You don't get anxious about anything. <laughs> Ain't he getting in a hurry, John? Actually, he said, hey, we got plenty of time here. Uh, let's go over here and take care of this person, take care of that person. Uh, that way we don't have to go in circles. And then <laughs> we'll take care of Lazarus. And then, and then they came to him and said, hey, don't worry about it. He, he's dead. By the time he got to him, he was three days dead and stinking. Some of you this morning, you feel like, uh, there's, there's certain uh, things in your life you feel like it's dead. You feel like it's too far gone. What I want you to know, uh, Easter, what Easter is all about is Jesus. He is the resurrection and the life. All you have to do is invite him into those dead places in your life, into those dead relationships. And when you do that, the, Jesus comes in and he resurrects everything that is dead. Hallelujah. Just like he did Lazarus when he raised him from the dead. But they got so excited, they had to go share they just had to go share, so they, they ran. These ladies, can you imagine these ladies in these high heels? I mean, they're just picking each other up as they're stumbling because they're so excited. and Because, um, I mean, they have rocks, just like we have rocks, you know. I mean, uh, ladies, watch out out there. Let some of these men, you know, be gentlemen here. Uh, we've had some ladies stumble off on them rocks out there. But anyway, uh, so uh, they run, and they just had to go tell the brethren and they were so excited. Can you imagine being so excited? And you going to, to uh, uh, Matthew, you going to Mark, and you saying, Hey, 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 it's true, it's true. What Jesus told us is true. We went to the tomb. It was rolled away. We encountered these angels. It was like lightning. We were scared. We, we fell down on our knees. And then, and then, and then uh, we were scared. And then they told us, hey, why you look for the living among the dead? He's not here. He's risen. It's true. He's risen. He's risen. He, the tomb is empty. And then they looked at her and said, what? You're making up fairy tales. There's no way. That is impossible. Can you imagine the... The setback, man, I've been there, I've been there. Hey, what, you've been diagnosed with get what the doctor said, it's incurable. Oh, no, 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 it's not incurable. Jesus took straps on, your back for, uh, on his back for your healing. You could be healed right now. There's nothing impossible to those who believe. Will you just believe? Will you just believe? And them saying, oh, oh I tried, but it just, it's just impossible. No, no, just believe, just believe. You can, you can, ha- nothing's impossible. You can be healed, restored, delivered. Just believe. And then Peter. Peter, I love Peter, you know. Peter, he don't care what anybody thinks. He's outspoken, you know. And and Peter says, hmm, they're very, very convincing, but I got to go to the tomb myself. So Peter gets on his high horse. He goes to clicking and clacking all the way, all the way to the tomb and uh, looks in there and sees that the tomb is empty, the stone has been rolled away, that the linen garments are, are folded up there, sitting there. And then Peter's like, hey, girls, let's go back. Peter goes back with the ladies and said, hey, guys, we've got to take note. We've got to start believing these ladies. I know, I know they've missed it here and there, but they got it right. They got it right. The tomb is empty. <laughs> and so the guys started believing, of course, then. Jesus made his entrance into the room and made himself known and hung out with them for 40 days. Can we give God some glory? 